Jiu-Jitsu by the Train Tracks. This is episode number 23, and we have the very special and very mean, mean Mike. Hi, guys. How you doing? <laughs> oh, and of course, James Williams. You know he's over here. I show up from and, uh, time to time. You know, we're, we're sitting here ready to have a, a conversation about Mike's meanness. Um, Mike, I was trying to get you to do a character when you came on to the show, like become... And you know, yes. like embody, embody be the mean, mean Mike. Be yeah. mean Mike. Yeah. So what what's going on? Like, have you put thought in, into this at all, or what, what's happening? No, I mean, I wouldn't be able to keep up that character, no. that facade. No, uh, no, not even for the people. Mm. Yeah, especially not for them. I was thinking exactly. like a like exactly. a macho man kind of vibe, you know, like oh, mean <laughs> Mike, you know, <laughs> like my version of mean Mike. I I picture my mean Mike. In like a tuxedo shirt that says he's here for business, but he's also here for party. <laughs> he's kind of mean, but more like a serial killer mean. You know, he's real, real calm and doesn't really respond to anything whatsoever. Just yeah, got to meld into the background. Yeah, I got to be in the background. Yeah, like a Dexter. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just thinking back to like when we uh, shot a couple of the Matt Rat videos. Yeah. Uh, that was our first attempt at uh, online stardom, right? Yeah. In the jiu-jitsu community. Um, I had a lot of fun shooting those, and I liked the serial killer vibe that we uh, we gave you on that. Yeah. It came very well, natural. I say, if we ever started doing that style again, then of course I could keep up that facade. But when we're doing, you know, quote unquote, like an instructional. Or showing a move for jiu-jitsu, I don't think I could keep up that that character without it seeming seem too corny, you know. Yeah, just insert the one episode of uh, Mike embodying his serial killer nature. <laughs> people want to see more of that we'll just you know we'll kind of sne- sneakily like we won't t- we'll share the link or anything we'll just kind of like <laughs> if you right, find you, it you find you it. want to see some cringe <laughs> like we'll show you some cringe like overall i'm a nice guy do i have a mean a, do I'm i have a, a, i'm a nice he's like, trying to work it out yeah, yeah. Trying like, to, am yeah. i a nice guy <laughs> started talking before i had a full answer here <laughs> so much but i do have a mean streak that's okay because, we know but i think as i enjoy you know, being mean on the mats, but I also enjoy when it's done to me too. So, like, like you know, really somebody does, heavy yeah, like, if somebody does, like, got really serious. Yeah. If somebody does, like, a, like, a, they're like, <laughs> face crank me instead of doing a choke, mm. and they're like, sorry, I'm like, no, it's all right. Like, yeah. a part of me, like, kind of likes Do it that, again. Which is, I know, probably some weird, you know, well, I think if S&M you're all, stuff, but it definitely <laughs> is. If you're always uh, protecting yourself with the tap, I mean, you really shouldn't care what somebody's doing to you, right? I right. mean, they could be, like, spazzing out, trying to pass your guard. You can tap. They don't even have a submission yet. And you're yeah. just like, oh, man, you just, you know. I'm tapping to your energy. <laughs> I'm tapping because you, you're scaring me. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I've, of course, have been mean on the mats. And I've never hurt anybody except for Jeff. Jeff's the only one yeah. that I've ever hurt. Yeah. Seems like everybody in this damn schools hurt me and it was and it was by accident you know except for james surprisingly yeah i don't hurt you yeah i don't feel like i hurt you either you're such a liar (laughs) (laughs) well jeff you probably weren't (laughs) respecting the tap like you were talking about yeah Yeah, he definitely uh, doesn't (laughs) jeff Jeff was not well it's not often i get submissions thrown on me (laughs) um you know well we play a strong (laughs) position we have a strong positionally focused school i feel like you know i don't think a lot of people have strong submission games um the primary one that i like to go for is anything from the back like the back is where i like to submit from side control um but the back is where it's at you know Mm. what i mean the choke all day Mm. the numbers don't lie you know what i'm saying you used to do a lot of triangles oh triangle yeah like when i first started it was like triangle city like two three a night every night (laughs) You just get to a point. Well, first of all, you were like a white belt, and I was a purple belt. So. Yeah, but it was everybody. It was. It yeah. wasn't just me. It was a lot of white belts. <laughs> well, yeah, okay, yeah, you're right. A lot of white We've belts. We've been about five years in now, almost with all of us, and uh, you know, about to take that next big step here soon this summer, which yeah. I'm excited about. Um, for those of you that don't know, we've got uh, we've got some big promotions happening in the school, which is just it's just the next milestone, you know, and I'm pretty stoked on it. Uh, 
So, Mike, let's take a look at uh, Dante's interpretation of the of what Mean Mike looks like. I actually love this logo. I know you said you wanted some more beard. I think James <laughs> said he wanted some more beard. Yeah. But, you know, sometimes you, you shave the beard, and I feel like the stubble is... Uh, I think I know exactly what video he was going off of. Yeah. Like a oh, still I frame. The and thumbnail. I think I, yeah. I think I didn't have a very big beard then. Like, I had just shaved, so... But it's, it's an like, accurate representation of that the still frame he's going off of. The problem with a like a thick beard and a picture like that is it takes away from so much of the detail. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's like what do you just like color in a beard? It's very like a beard is an intimidating thing in person, but as from an art standpoint, it's like with this style with faces yeah. in, in particular. Yeah, because if he did a beard on this, I think it would have to look like the hair does. Yeah. So if you imagine that hair on the bottom, it may not translate the same way. Yeah, that kind of red white. Beard, like the hair, right. instead of a yeah, dark beard. I like the uh, quadruple M, though. It looks like a little platform that your head's sitting on. Maybe you're like in the... <laughs> yeah, it looks like I've been my, had my head cut off and it's like, just sitting there. Yeah. The, fu yeah. the Futurama uh, version of you. you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, and yeah. They put the head, head in the, the jar. jar. Head in the yeah. jar. Yeah. No, I thought that was good. Yeah, it is. I would I like buy, the, I would I like buy the, a Mean Mike t-shirt, would you? Uh, I don't know if I want <laughs> Mike's face on <laughs> I get it. Like, I get tattoo. that enough. Like Mike's on my my back enough, and Whoopsie. that's like a permanent mount. If I buy a shirt <laughs> with Mike's face on it, like that's me permanently mounted. Anytime I wear that shirt, creepiest place you would tattoo this picture? Creepiest place? You know where? <laughs> <laughs> you know where? I think the creepiest pla creepiest place would be somewhere where you could see it every day, like a forearm or something. Well, like, again, like is I that said, Mike's you face know where. on your arm. <laughs> As soon as I go to the restroom, oh God, he's looking back at me. <laughs> it would be like Mike's face, but I would like have like a little arm tattoo, so like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, that's when it gets really weird, right? Oh yeah, yeah. weird. <laughs> that's only weird for you, not weird for me. I don't it's care. Weird for me. Well, you got to think about it. You got to like, you have it tattooed where? <laughs> So yeah, we're uh, we're trying to make up for lost time here. The whole first hour we've been mm. here, we were trying to fix a issue with Pro Tools. You see, mm. I'm not a tech head. I was trying to clear some space, deleted mm. some things I shouldn't have. Mm. <clears throat> On top of that, I don't know if you guys can hear, um, but it is raining balls outside and uh, oh, big old yeah. fat buckets. Oh yeah, it's coming. And it's through. a lovely Mother's Day. So happy Mother's Day. Happy you Mother's probably, Day. Yeah, you probably won't post. Sorry this for in mentioning time. balls. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, yeah, you guys uh, need to start figuring out like what the next holiday is, so yeah, you can give the shout out now and yeah. when it's released. We miss it every time. <laughs> yeah, every time. We just got a really busy life, so editing kind of <laughs> just depends on what the weather outside is and what tournaments are coming up. Yeah, trying to stay consistent is the focus right now. Like, just try to get at least a episode up um, or any video up on the YouTube uh, weekly. Um, but you know, I mean, we we. Uh, you know, as time moves on, we'll improve that those processes. I mean, shit. Lately, we've put more videos up on YouTube than we have in the entire five years, at least mm -hmm. in the past year. It feels yeah. like, you know. Speaking of videos on YouTube, I saw the the clip you sent me earlier. What clip was that? Speaking of Mean Mike, one of his videos cracked a thousand. Oh yeah, yeah. The uh, the very first Mean Mike video was yeah. right at uh, fifteen hundred views. Ain't that crazy, Mike? Was that the Nogi Ezekiel one? Yep. Yeah, the, you knew it was. Which <laughs> I think was a was a good title, right? Like Nogi Ezekiel. Like yeah. how many yeah. people are doing that? Yeah. Um, I hate that fucking move. <laughs> you know, like I'm just like if somebody tries to pull a Nogi Ezekiel choke on me, like the flame inside just like. I'm like, you don't have anything to grab onto. You're like, you know, it's just, yeah. just like. Well, uh, the one I showed was more of a throat crush anyway, because the fist goes right in the yeah, middle right in the pipe. instead of like all the way across on the other side of the neck. Wasn't so there a dude like, in the yeah. a dude in the UFC who did that from bottom of mount to the guy I on top? I believe so. Yeah, I, I don't know his name. He's like a Russian guy. He's got a name, a Russian name. He's got a name. <laughs> hey, you know what's scary about the Russians? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, I watched the uh, movie Training Day the other day. Um, that's such a great movie, right? Ethan Hawke, uh, oh, yeah. Denzel Washington. And the whole movie, you know, like when it came out, I was a little younger. And, and sometimes when you first watch a movie, you don't process it the same way. Mm -hmm. Whereas when you watch it years later. Yeah. And uh, the whole time when they were like talking about Denzel's character and how the Russians were out to get him and 
you know, the, the progress, pro, pro, uh, f- what is the word? <laughs> Don't, fuck. Don't look at me like that, James. Okay. I'm having a hard day. It's raining outside. My mood is fucked up. Well, good Lord, Jeff. Sound it out. Use your words. Use there, your words. Take a moment. Breathe. As the plot progresses, is there that what you're you trying go. to get at? Pass. <laughs> All right. So as the movie. <laughs> but it was oh, a good shit. movie. Yeah. You see Denzel going through all these different transitions. And I think it's absolutely hilarious because I, I see what you're saying. When the first time I watched it, it was like, oh, this is entertaining. The second time I watched it, it was freaking hilarious. The third time I watched it, I was like, this is kind of stressful. But. The funny part of it is always when he goes out into the middle of the street and he has this King Kong moment of just mm-hmm. talking trash to everybody in the streets. Yeah, that was a kind of like a generational s- statement, right? Like oh, that yeah. was like a such a huge line in a movie that everybody yeah. would spoof off of oh, when yeah. it came out. Well, he won an Academy Award for that movie, and that speech is probably what sealed it for him. Uh, yeah, they actually filmed that in an actual like gang neighborhood. Oh yeah, uh, I, I read the trivia well. on Internet Movie Database. They actually had to get permission from the, the person that was in charge of that area. Wow! To, and a lot of those extras in the back are people who lived in those projects. I'd That's be terrified to film there if that was the case. Yeah, well, you know. There's, but there's he's Denzel Washington. They probably loved. You know, he didn't have nothing to worry about. But if I was there, I'd be like, oh my god. That'd have been a reason to shoot him, just because he's Denzel. I could <laughs> say, oh yeah, I did that. I shot him. That's crazy, man. Like what actors are willing to do or what just Hollywood in general is willing to do to look like for realism. Mm -hmm. You know, you take any gangster movie that you've seen in the past and there's always like some involvement by some Italian, some legit Italian mobster on like maybe a level we're not sure of. So Uh, yeah, I know uh, the Godfather almost got shut down by real mobsters. I can't remember the name of the gangsters off the top of my head. Is they were a little concerned about how they were being portrayed because it's being portrayed somewhat accurately. And they didn't want that hmm. out there. Don't know, want to know the way. Yeah. This is not the way. There's some really good uh, podcasts about mobsters coming up around the time when all the immigration was going through Ellis Island. I wish I could remember the name of it. can't think of it, but it's, it's awesome, especially the episode about Lucky Luciano. So if you ever get a chance, <laughs> just type in Lucky Luciano into a podcast search and you'll, you'll find it. Mm. Uh, he's basically the one that created what we know of the structure of the mob, at least the Italian mob. Mm. He's the one that you know got rid of there being one boss above everybody and having the five families and you know each having a say and having their own section of New York that they controlled. Uh, he called it the commission. Mm. Very interesting. And he also helped uh, uh, the U.S. during the Second World War and uh, allowed him to get out of jail. So <laughs> they sent him to this like terrible prison up near Canada. Some and, people think yeah. the mob is behind the murder of JFK and some other crazy mm-hmm. stuff, too. Yep. Yeah. See, see, Mike, these are the random facts you know that really <laughs> scare people. <laughs> about you and why the mean Mike moniker kind of for me goes into like a serial killer place yeah where's my mom too don't worry about it (laughs) yeah yeah I'm sure and your whole high school (laughs) yeah they probably had a parade the day you graduated (laughs) I do have a fascination with serial killers I think a lot of people do just because it it is interesting Uh, I wouldn't say mine's unhealthy but Mm. maybe to some other people Mm. they might think Mm. it's unhealthy oh okay but I do listen to a lot of true crime podcasts, watch a lot of true crime TV, have a few books on it. So, Mike, you've been working the closed guard a lot lately. How's that going? Correct. Good. Uh, and your your motivation was the John Donaher DVD that uh, came out based around the closed guard? or was Well, it, uh, no, that wasn't my motivation. I think uh, I had read a couple things uh, about the concepts with – playing guard and one of them was that even if you like to play something like Delahiva or spider guard or any sort of op- open guard it's like pull them into your closed guard make them work to get out of your closed guard because it takes a lot of effort to get out of someone's closed guard well 
a lot of effort for me. <laughs> and uh, so then once they've able to, you know, maybe break open your clothes guard, you can transition to the game that you really want to play, whether it's, you know, the collar sleeve that James likes to play or your spider guard player, uh, which, of course, I'm not a spider guard player. But also getting trapped in someone's clothes guard, and I was just exhausted by the time I was able to even – stand up you break open the guards it took me a handful of times to you know get the sleeve grip stand up and i was just exhausted and i was like hmm <laughs> <laughs> and also i think for longevity purposes getting older uh close guard might be something that i could play at a decent level when I'm older. Yeah, reasonable pace, low impact. Um, yeah, I mean, I think uh, closed guard was my jam throughout the whole beginning of my jujitsu, right? I mean, that was really all that was taught, uh, and then some half guard. And then, uh, <clears throat> you know, once, you're, once you realize that you're not always going to hold your guard closed, that's when it becomes important to develop an open guard system, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I think, yeah, closed guard is probably number one out of all the guards, you know, as far as dangerous, I think closed guard is definitely number one. And then, uh, you know, as it opens up, that's when things get interesting, right? Now it's like how, how fluid is the guard passer versus your different styles of open guard, right? right. Whether you're a cross sleeve player or lapel guard player, um, you know, each of uh, those, those guards require a specific style of passing. You know, you have to know the exact way to blade your body for a lasso, uh, a spider lasso, for example, you know. Yeah. You have to know how to uh, shut down the grip exchanges for a lapel guard player. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, it takes, um, you know, that's, that's the exciting thing about it, you know. Really. I also think, like, closed guard, <clears throat> for me, one of the things I've noticed, so I started back in, like, February, like, really working on it, focusing on it, is – if I can pull somebody into close guard, somebody who's either faster than me, especially faster than me, but faster than me and more explosive than me, I can slow them down and take away or at least pause some of their attributes for a while and start working my own game. Because, you know, you take somebody like a young Max, he's, he's so fast. There's no way I'm ever going to be that fast. But if I can pull him down into close guard, kind of, put some quicksand underneath his feet for a while and slow him down. It gives me a better chance to be competitive. So it's like if I can take away somebody's attributes or at least put them on pause, then that's going to be a plus for me, especially yeah. when my gas tank runs out very fast. <laughs> that <laughs> old man jujitsu. Mike, how old are you? 34. I'll be 35 here pretty soon. This Damn. dude keeps calling himself old man. He ain't old man. I'm older than you, Mike. I know. I'm the youngest one here. James thinks I'm older than him. He is. I call him old all the time. <laughs> he thinks I'm older Hell, than you him. James looks ahead of me. James looks the youngest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. You probably lived a cleaner life than me and Jeff. Have. Nah, yeah. <laughs> 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 Damn, Mike could throw me under the bus. Yeah, well, well, I'm not gonna throw just myself under the bus. It's that. Uh, it's that uh, rock star lifestyle. Yeah. Oh, that's what is it that was. What, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm blaming it on too. <laughs> it's not not music. the poor diet I've been doing for years and years and yeah. Yeah. The poor diet. <laughs> the poor diet. Yeah. yeah. Drinking. Drinking. Mainly drinking. Yeah. A lot of a lot of whiskey. But the the going back to the clothes guard, I do have a lot of instructionals that I've bought over the last few years. And I'll get like ADHD on them. I'll start on one and then go through it and be like, oh, you know, I want to start doing, you know systematically attacking the guard by Gordon Ryan. I switch over to that. Then, oh, the body lock pass DVD by Lachlan Giles. So now I've bought these instructionals. Some of them I haven't even watched all the way through. Spent this money, didn't put the time in on the mats to even get any benefit from them. So I decided on closed guard, bought the instructional, the Danaher one that we talked about earlier. And then I think me and you were talking, and you're like a good year just working this mm -hmm. system. So it's like, all right, no no more buying instructionals. <laughs> you know, go through this one from February to February of next year and just keep working that. Anytime that 
you know, we're either doing guard player's choice if we're doing, like, sweet pass mid in class or any open mat stuff. Uh, sorry, from close guard and just working through that that uh, that instructional instead of just buying another one, getting a couple hours into it and then buying another one and, and not get any benefit from it. Didn't you buy a book as well on close guard? I feel like I remember you yeah, talking about well, that. There's a, a documentary. There, there's a oh, book a called Close. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It's not actually. Robert Drysdale uh, it's not wrote a book on the, yeah, It's more about the history of, of The jiu-jitsu. real history, right, of jiu-jitsu. Yeah, it's fascinating. Because the, there is a, a kind of like a hero portrait story that has been painted about the Gracies and everything. and But there's a lot of details that are unknown regarding the the real I guess players in early jujitsu, right? The, the OGs, yeah. if you will. <laughs> I thought it was a really well written book, and I haven't seen the actual documentary yet. I don't know if it's even been released to the public. And yeah, he he doesn't paint that picture that you're talking about, but I also think that he didn't talk a lot of uh, negative stuff about the Gracies. I thought he had a lot of positive things to say, but his uh, picture that he painted is not the same one that you hear uh, when you talk about the history of jujitsu, mm. but they are still probably the most important part of it. He's a really well-spoken guy, Robert Drysdale. Like when you look at him, he looks like a hard dude, you know. Yeah. But when he's very intellectual, he was a guest on an episode of the Matt Byrne podcast with Keenan and Josh. Yeah. And uh, I really enjoyed that episode. I think he was also promoting the the Close Guard documentary. I think he has like a master's in history or something. Drysdale does. I believe so it. He's a smart guy. A lot of these jujitsu people had degrees and other career opportunities and chose to just live the lifestyle of a martial artist, which should tell you something, you know? Yeah. Should tell you something. Yeah, the money can't buy you happiness, right? That's right. right. You need jiu-jitsu can <laughs> yeah <laughs> well i think it's uh it's like i think ah oh man i think too much that's a problem <laughs> <laughs> um but people who are like uh intimidated by this or scared by it um you know are, are living in a fearful mindset you know it's one thing if like you have health issues that prevent you from doing something like this but we all got we all know about those things and Nobody's judging anybody for that, but, you know, you have to look internally about what holds you back from living a healthy lifestyle. It doesn't have to be a martial arts lifestyle, right? Yeah, but <clears throat> when you choose to do something difficult, um, there's a reward process. It's an esteemable action, um, and it's going to grant you with more self-esteem, more confidence, you know? So I think uh, I think choosing to go the martial arts route is... Um, is just teaches you how to how to fight how to fight for your life you know what i mean yeah. i mean that's what life is though right it's it's that perpetual fight mm-hmm. of what do i have to push myself to do today so either i have to push myself out of the bed i have to push myself to go to work i have to push myself to keep my job i have to push myself to try to live right and that's just another fight and the acceptance, you know, like acceptance that, you know, you're going to go in there and you're going to be tired, you know, and you're not going to like it. But, you know, <laughs> knowing that once that process is through, you know, it's like you have to believe that there's going to be a reward in the long term. You know, like when you invest your money in the stock market, you believe that one day this money is going to turn into a lot more money. Well, you better believe that if you show up day in and day out to the gym, you're going to turn into a different human being. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A better version yeah. of yourself. So. You also have to have the right reason. And to me, the right reason about coming in here is because it's fun. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, if I got to the point where I was, I had a goal in mind, I want to get a, a black belt, but then I start not having fun, but I, I keep pushing myself to the goal and I'm in it for the wrong reason. You know, I got to have fun while I'm here. It's the only thing that's going to keep me going. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I don't plan on that ever not being fun. It's always fun. Yeah, and I mean, I I, I think, you know, there's a lot of things that could keep people from wanting, like, (laughs) 
somebody like me and Mike on top of side control might not be fun for some people, yeah. you know, yeah. like, but, but at the, in the same token, you know, it's like some people like Mike doesn't, don't care. And they kind of like being smashed because it gives them something to like fight against. Right. It's mm-hmm. like, sometimes we like to come from behind. <laughs> <laughs> This guy. I'm not even. I can't he say anything. He hit the table I so hard he moved the camera. I can't he say it was so funny. anything. God damn it. I cannot say a damn thing this whole podcast. I just make heavy eye contact. And everything that I say, James is looking at me like, you don't know what the <laughs> fuck you're saying, man. <laughs> no, you know exactly what you're saying. No, I'm, tr- I'm trying to not <laughs> be over. Uh, ambiguous with my words uh-huh <laughs> is that the correct is that the correct way to say that ah, probably not I'm trying to communicate through the microphones james gotcha. okay you gotta help me out man for the youtubes you gotta even though if i'm not making sense you're supposed to fill in the spaces i'd i'd normally do but you were on a roll with that one i just Shit. wanted to see what you were gonna go i was laughing because he was laughing i didn't laugh at his his joke <laughs> i just laughed because he thought it was so funny <laughs> well again like since the since the moment Mike walked in here, like things have just been going wrong, left and right. And well, you know, it's you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> it's me, Mike. That's what he does. That's the that's the, the energy he brings. You're talking about like coming in, and getting smashed. Of course, if I had my choice, I wouldn't be getting smashed. I'd be doing the smashing, but I don't mind, you know, getting beat and getting smashed because what does that do? Not only is that making me better, hopefully. Uh, but also, it's making me forget about the other things that I had going outside of here. Uh, all I'm worried about is I'm getting fucking smashed. I need to, uh, yeah, I need yeah. to get out of this position. I need to do this. I'm not worrying about what just happened at work a few hours before I came in here. Oh, the guy and, that cut me off at the four way yeah, stop. It's like I need that, mm. uh, especially before the job change. I just went through. I, I needed that. I needed something that I was going to come in here, and I would not think about work. And you know, to to that too, like if you're coming in here and you're getting your butt kicked and you're not having fun, what is it that you need to change? You know, Mm -hmm. like it could not necessarily be something outside. It could be within yourself and within your own, you know, actions that could change your perspective. Yeah. Like what is it that has made this fun for you that went away? Oh, I keep getting caught in triangles. Oh, people figure out how to pass my guard now. Like I was good for a little bit. Now nothing's working. Well, you got to change something. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. you've got to put your foot down for yourself and take responsibility for your actions. Yeah, do you know? some film study. I mean, that's the it's a, the other part about jujitsu is accountability. Like nobody's gonna force you to do anything here. You know, <clears throat> this is your playground for you to, for your self growth. You know, and you get the option to to see how, what what kind of path you want to take with this art. Yeah, yeah. that was well spoken, Jeff. Thanks, man. You're Sometimes welcome. I have he, coherent he thoughts. Is, he was thinking about it ever since he had stopped talking up until then. <laughs> this is what I'm going to. He's say. not listening okay. to what we're saying. He's he just going over in his head he's what like, he's right. going to say. Oh, Let me. Man, I made a really that. quick note on the inside of my hand. I'm gonna read it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys are like talking about something else, like basketball or something. Exactly. That's how you know. You're and I'm just like, I us. love Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> no, it's quite all right. This is this is normal for Jeff. This is good though. You know, we actually got some recording done. Let's see how far along we Unless are. Unless you forgot to hit record. No, definitely been recording. We're oh, thirty three okay. minutes in. I honestly don't think we have to do a whole lot more than this. This has been a pretty damn good yeah. conversation. Um, me and Mike, I appreciate you coming out today, Thank you. man. Thanks for Thanks having for, me. Uh, for doing the thing, and uh, I think people are enjoying uh, the video, so we look forward to continue to upload those for you guys and uh, don't hit don't forget to uh, don't hate hey don't hate uh james what do they got to do right uh you gotta subscribe <laughs> click the bell um hit the notifications as well so you always know when we put a new video out also uh grab your phone from your friends make them subscribe get us all the amazing subscribers you can that way we can put out more of these amazing videos and we could also start uh, promoting ourselves through the uh, Spotify. <laughs> hey Mike, do me a favor. I want you to look dead into the camera and I want you to say thanks for watching Juju by the Choo Choo. Alright, say it again. <laughs> <laughs>
just say, look at the camera and say, thanks for watching the juju by the choo choo. The juju by the choo choo. Yeah, All right. All right. Don't make eye contact with him. Trying to get in the zone, fellas. Thanks for watching. Juju by the choo choo. You're watching the juju by the choo choo. Juju by the choo choo.